In today's video, we're going to have a look at the downswing. We're going to go into a bit more detail. We're going to look at three main concepts. We're going to look at the sequence of the downswing. We're going to look at how the body shape is in the downswing and also the radius of the downswing. So first, we're going to talk a bit about the sequence of the downswing. So when we start the downswing, we get to the, to the top of the backswing here. The first move that we make should be a little bit to the, to the side here. So I'm moving laterally across. So I'm shifting my weight onto the lead foot. So when I do that, I don't want to have too much, too much turn in the body. Okay, I make a shift across. My arms will start to drop down. Okay, so from this point, then there's going to be more turn, the hips are going to, going to open, the shoulders are going to open, and then I'm going to fire the arms and club. So the sequence always works from the, from the ground up. So I shift across, and now I start to get the, the hips turning, shoulders turning, arm, and then club. But the, the fact of the matter is, everything's happening so quickly on that downswing that most amateur players don't fire the arms quick enough. So I think that the best feel that we can get once we get to the top, once we make that little shift across, we really need to feel we're firing the arms straight away. Okay, so the arms come into the right position at impact. Now, what a lot of amateur players do, they get too dominant either with the upper body, with the shoulders. Okay, so from down the line, it's going to look this way. If I get to the top, and I, as I start to shift across, I just get the shoulders turning and I don't fire the arms. You can see how the club comes in front of me. So what we really need to feel when we shift across here is that the arms are firing, so the club comes from a nice in inside path here. Um, so the other mistake we see is when the hips fire, okay, and, and, the, and the upper body stays back, and the arms still stay up in the air. So that really will, will, will get you coming stuck from the inside then. So like I said, I think the fact of the matter is that the the, the sequence does happen from the ground up. We do, we do start to get the knees and the hips turning first, but the feeling that we're going to need, okay, is more a feeling that the arms are firing earlier. Okay, so most golfers do not fire the arms quick enough, and that's why they don't get the path right through, through impact. So we've got to get to the top, we make a shift across, and then we want to feel like the arms are firing. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at the body shape. So when we talk about the body shape, what I'm talking about is the angle of the spine. So when I get to the top of the backswing, what I want to have is, that, is I want to have my spine leaning slightly back from the target. So you can see here at the top and in the, in the right side of my body, there's a little bit of an angle between the upper body and my right leg. So that's my angle leaning back with the spine. When I, when I, when I make my downswing, I want to maintain that shape. Okay, so I want to maintain that angle of the spine as I move forward here. Okay, so what we don't want to have happen is get an inverted shape, okay, where my spine leans forward, or create more shape this way coming down. So the, the, the shape is also going to be related to the sequence. So the golfers that get to the top and are too dominant with the shoulders, okay, so that would be the shoulders working the club out this way, okay, that's going to get the club coming too much from the outside. You can see my spine angle is leaning this way. It's going to affect the path of my swing. So a lot of people who slice the ball get the body shape inverted coming down. Okay. Now those people that tend to hit too much from the inside out, they will tend to get too much shape. So they'll slide the lower body forward and the upper body hangs back. So you can see how I'm now creating more shape this way. That's going to get me coming too much from the inside. So the real correct way to, to make this downswing, once we get to the top here, now we talked about in the sequence shifting across first. When I shift across, I want my upper center, my sternum, and my lower center here, near the belly button here, to both move forward as I make that, that, that shift onto the, onto the lead foot. So I want to be this way, maintaining that angle. Of course, like we said in the sequence, then I'm gonna to start to fire the arms and I maintain that, that shape in the body. So when I start my downswing, I have my left shoulder under my chin, it stays down in that first move. Okay, so the left shoulder staying down. I'm maintaining this angle that way. I'm not shifting back or getting inverted. I'm moving both lower center and upper center forward. As I fire my arms here, I'm able to get into the right shape at impact. So when I'm at impact here, I want my head to be pretty much in the middle of the feet and I want my left shoulder to have worked over to my, my left foot. So we always talk about this side being against the wall when we start and we're slightly through that wall when we hit. 
Left shoulder over the left foot is a really important uh, position to get at impact. Okay, so the last concept we're going to look at is, is the radius of the downswing. So when I get to the top of the backswing, I like to always have the shaft away from me here, away from my right shoulder here. You can see the position of my right arm. There's a, there's a bend in the right arm. So we don't want that right arm to be any narrower than 90 degrees. Somewhere between 80 and 90 would be good. Now when I make that downswing, when I start my downswing, I want to maintain that arm structure. So as I start down, you can see the motion of the right arm. I don't get narrower in here this way, and I don't throw it away. So I get to the top of the backswing, and I want to maintain that radius as I shift across. You can see the right arm slowly starts to come closer to the body. I don't get it jammed up. So if I get to the top, okay, and I fire just the hips forward, that will often jam up that right arm. I get too narrow, and that's, that's, that, that's going to be a, a really difficult position to make a correct release from. Now, the other thing that some players do, they accelerate too early this way, they throw the club away, and that's often when the shoulders are, are too active. So you can see how the sequence, the body shape, and the radius are all interrelated. So we want to get to the top. We want to maintain that radius. We shift across both centers. You can see how the shaft stays away from my shoulder. It doesn't get any, any closer or further away. I've got a good radius there. And then, I, then I'm in position to get into that, that strong impact. Okay, So when we talk about a strong, strong impact, we want to be covering the ball. We want that left shoulder to be over the left foot. We've got our body shape. We had the correct sequence. Okay, So we got the body moving across. We maintain the radius on the downswing. Okay, Then we're really trying to fire those arms and get into a good position where we feel like we're hitting against the wall here. And that's going to give us a much more solid impact.